literally. We have a 10-round junior middleweight showdown for you. Friday Night Fights presented by Miller High Life. Verno Phillips and Kasim Uma. 22-year-old Kasim Uma. Born in Uganda, now fighting out of West Palm Beach, Florida. 153 pounds, 12, 1 and 1 with nine knockouts. We saw him in his last fight here on Friday Night Fights back on June the 29th. He won a dominant 10-round decision against Tony Marshall. 31-year-old Verno Phillips coming off a 14-month, two-week layoff. 154 pounds out of Denver, Colorado. 31-8-1, 16 knockouts. He had a 29-month layoff. We saw him on this network knock out Julian Jackson way back in 1998. Legal problems, spent some time in jail. Came back last June of 2000. So another long layoff for Verno Phillips. Gentlemen, Eddie Obregon, the referee. Are there North the Dakota here? rules will be used for our first bout of the evening. They are as follows. Three knockdown rule in effect, so is the standing eight count. Fighter can be saved by the bell in the final round only. Referee or doctor may stop it. Accidental foul, they'll go to the scorecards after half the rounds are complete. That would be five. What a story, Kasim Uma, if you missed it the last time. He came to the U.S. in February of 1998. At the age of seven, while in Uganda, while in school, the Army came and basically abducted him for 10 years, saw his family only once, and realized, I have to escape this country. So he took up Taekwondo, but he realized that the Ugandan Taekwondo team never travels, so he became a boxer. And in 1998, when the Ugandan team was coming to the United States for a tournament, he landed at the Reagan-Washington International Airport, and he and several teammates started running literally for their lives. He has U.S. residency now, has a U.S. passport. He can travel. He wants to become a U.S. citizen. He has a four-year-old son back in Uganda that he has not seen since he left. And his parents are sick, and he wants to get them to the United States. An incredible story for the 22-year-old Kasim Uma in the red. And he's a nice young man. I talked to him yesterday. And he's a 22-year-old Southpaw, who I think is a very good prospect. Maybe somebody who's going to make noise in this division. He has his trainer, Johnny Bumpus, and talking with Johnny yesterday as he and Phillips trade a bit. He said the thing that gave Marshall so much trouble and the thing that will probably give Phillips trouble is he said Uma's a Southpaw who likes to move to his left. Normally, southpaws like to go to their right to stay away from the right-hander's power. He goes to the left. That confuses the opposition. That's just a little extra problem that he brings to the table for an orthodox fighter matching up against a southpaw. Colonel Phillips has been in against a lot of talented people. Julio Vasquez, all the way back to 1991. Gianfranco Rossi and against a lot of good competition but it's a career that has been stalled with layoffs some inactivity with feet that tied up there nice combination by Phillips on the inside how quick the pace is how close Uma stays early to the older 31 year old Phillips may tell his fight because Phillips is a little bit shop worn but a very experienced fighter as you mentioned how will he stand up in a fast pace hard pace fight that is the question the question that uma is looking to answer phil she's been having a hard time getting fights he said when i was a top ranked guy my phone would always ring now it doesn't ring did some work with david reed hector camacho jr Worked a little with Vernon Forrest, J.C. Candelo. So he feels that he has gotten good work over these last 14 months. And he has had some very good moments in this final minute and a half of round one. Now Uma looks to trade. Uma with a shot combination. Phillips answers right back. Blistering pace to end round one. Well, coming up in our main event, the NABF Cruiserweight title is at stake. O'Neill Bell defends his crown against the veteran King Arthur Williams. Glad you can join us from Hankinson, North Dakota. Bob Hopper along with Teddy Atlas. Friday Night Fights presented by Miller High Life. Teddy, in this fight, the main event, Williams uh, against O'Neill Bell, normally 
each guy may have a say in how the fight unfolds, but you think it might not pan out that way? I think so. I think that maybe this time it's more in the hands of one guy. That one guy, the more experienced Arthur Williams, because Arthur Williams is a guy that is just more polished, more experienced than O'Neill Bell. Taking nothing away from O'Neill Bell. A real game guy, he has power. But I don't know if he can match up with Arthur Williams. The question is going to be how much does Arthur Williams, at 36 years of age, the former champion, have left? It may come down to that. Williams told us he thinks he has two years left. He says, I've never been a drinker. I've never been a smoker. I've always been in the ring. I've always kept my body in shape. We'll see how it pans out tonight. Well, what a pace. At the end of round one for Kasim Uma and Verno Phillips. And they schedule a 10-round junior middleweight bout. We'll take a look at the punch numbers. Uma through 118, but the percentage, according to CompuBox, the same at 25%. I give credit to the older Phillips. The Phillips, who may be a little shot worn, coming in here with a plan, trying to pick his spots, not staying right in front and making it too fast to pace, trying to pick his spots with the younger Uma. And catching Uma, as you mentioned at the end of the last round, in spots because Uma was staying in the middle a little bit too long with his offensive exchanges. Right there, you can see Uma standing up straight a little bit. According to CompuBox in the fight against Tony Marshall, Uma landed 44% of his power shot. And right now he's digging in with some of his power here. Johnny Bumpus, the trainer of Uma, says that the thing with Kasim is to keep him focused. He's a young guy, he's only 22 years of age, a little brash. One of the things they worked on in training with Uma was to get him to step back a little bit. They felt against Marshall, if he stepped back a little bit, he would have been able to land more power shots, create some more space for himself. He just better be careful he doesn't step back from too close. He did that once already tonight. You can get caught that way. Something about Uma. He doesn't throw one at a time. No, and he does not waste much, Bob. He gets himself with his feet, technically in good position before he throws, and he tries to make everything count. He gets caught standing in the middle straight up once in a while. And Phillips is just experienced enough to take advantage of that. Watch Phillips cover up, Bob. He'll cover up, and he's looking for a slot. He's looking for a spot to come with a punch at the right time if Uma stays in the middle too long. Once again, as we said earlier, Uma does not waste too much. Phillips looking to jump in. Uma looking to counter. Good action play through the first two. SPN 2 presented by Miller Highlight. And in part by Just For Men, more than a hair color, it's the Rejuvenator. Ends gray in five minutes, looks natural. And by Western Union Money Transfer, the fastest way to send money worldwide. Hankinson, North Dakota. Where you can find a lot of porn. And we're at the Dakota Magic Casino. Round number three underway, Kasim Uma in the red, the veteran Verno Phillips in the black trunks. Take a look at the punch numbers in round number two. Uma landed 23 of 74 power shots. And he threw 69 more punches total in the round. If Uma, the young and I can promise it, talented Uma, has a flaw. It is sometimes he'll stand up a little straight in front of his man. Back in 1997, Phillips knocked out Godfrey Niakana in the 11th round. Uma said Niakana was one of his idols from his homeland of Uganda. Says, I want to make amends. Good left hand there by the South Pole Uma. Staggered Phillips for a second. 
but sometimes the temperament of style that's a clutch former of not wasting much can maybe hold him back a little bit in the finishing department. We'll find that out. Because his temperament bothers to not waste much. Good straight left hand there by Uma. Goes to the body, back to the head. Yeah, he puts his punches in there to count Uma. And he got caught going straight back with the right hand. There's, Uma, there's Phillips again. Phillips can see the flaw in Uma. Can he get him? Now Uma making a little adjustment. Before he was in the mode to go forward, the aggressive mode. Now he's stepping out a little bit, taking what Phillips is giving him since Phillips is walking in. That's a smart fighter making a little adjustment like that. A smart young fighter, Mr. Uma. And Phillips is just waiting for that moment where he can unload that right hand to the head. You're right, Bob. We talked about that before. He's covering up, but he's taking right now. His plan is to try to come right back at the right time or the wrong time, as far as Uma's concerned. Catch Uma still punching. Catch Uma standing in the middle a little too long. And sometimes Uma leaves that left hand down. You see Phillips just trying to time that right cross or that right hook. One of the important things for any fighter, in this case Uma, is to know how much time he has. He got four ball back. How much time he has to throw and then to move before something comes back? Does he have time for one, two, three, or four punches? That decision is very important. Overall, round three has been a very good round for Kasim Uma. As the veteran Verno Phillips tries to land that one big right hand. In the Dakota Magic Casino and Hankinson... North Dakota. Round number four underway. Kasim Uma in the red. Verno Phillips in the black trunks. No knockdowns. Both guys are throwing a lot of power shots. Uma throwing over 117 punches in each of the first three rounds. That time he kept his left hand up, Teddy, and Uma blocked the right hand from Phillips. Yes, he did. He's learning, Uma. He knows that that right hand has become the punch of choice for his opponent, Phillips, which is the punch of choice for a lot of orthodox fighters when they're fighting a southpaw, that right hand. Johnny Bumpus, the trainer for Uma, said, throw the left and come back with the right. Johnny Bumpus, the former junior welterweight champion of the world. Both fighters in close, looking for the right punches, the right spot to throw. Watch how Uma will get underneath, cover up, and look to punch at the right time. Because Uma standing a little too straight up in front of his opponent. Again, if Uma's going to improve in certain spots, it's going to be not to do that. Stand straight up in front of his man. When you're in that area, get down low. Don't be tall. Be small. Or get your head on the side. But do not stand up tall when you're in that danger zone. Right in front of your man in that punching area. You can get all the way in, get in good defensive position where you can work and not get caught, or get all the way out, Bob. Phillips so shoots a left hand to the body. And he got a right hand in. And again, Uma standing straight up in that no-man zone. Overall, round four, the best round so far for Verno Phillips over the balance of the round. question is how much does he have in the tank at 31 and having a couple of long layoffs against the fit 22 year old Uma hey! 
acting a southpaw. And that has become the punch of choice for Phillips. Phillips had a very solid round number four. The punch numbers will favor Uma in volume and connects, but take a look at the effective punches landed in the fourth round. You had to like Verno Phillips' performance. Uma winning the jab category, but Phillips is just looking to go with power shots. One thing to note is here is that Uma is not wasting much. He's being very efficient, very effective. What he throws, most of it lands. He's making Phillips work much harder to land his punches. He has to throw five, six, seven to land maybe two. Well, when Uma works, not much is missed. All right, to the corner of Kasim Uma, the aforementioned Johnny Bumpers, former champion. Johnny, uh, Kasim's fighting a good fight, but Phillips is, seems to be able to get him a couple times. Is Kasim a little too relaxed on the defensive end? Well, yeah, I think a little bit. He's not doing what he's supposed to do after he punches. He's got to either get around or get down. He started doing it the first round. I think he'll get back to it, though. I don't think this kid's going to be able to take this for 10 rounds. I agree with you, Johnny. It, it, now that's, that's beautiful right there. If Uma can keep up the pace, it's got to favor him with the older man in front of him. But the one thing that would concern me, I think you touched on it, is every once in a while Uma will stand up tall in front of his man. Exactly, exactly. Leave himself a little bit available. You must want him to correct that. Oh, yeah, definitely. He's got to start getting down and getting around. See, what I like to see him do is it's just like the last fight. Get in, bang, 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 bang. Step right back, let him come right back into it. Because that's what he's doing. He's waiting for him to punch. And then he's trying to counter. Hands high, baby. All right, punch Johnny, thanks chin. a lot. Johnny Bumpus in the corner of Kasim Uma. I think Phillips brings a little more pop, though, than Marshall did. Yes, he does. That's a good point, Bob. He definitely does. Marshall, a real warrior, but never had much hydro, much real atomic power in those hands. Phillips continues to try to time that right hand over Uma's left. Overall, this has been a better round five for Uma, Teddy. After round four, Phillips did a lot of good things. That's a good sign to the young fighter, how he responds after a tough round. Again, Uma standing straight up on the inside, leaving himself vulnerable in spots. It's almost like oh, he get tagged with a combination. It's almost like Uma was waiting for the referee. Well, we talked about Uma once in a while standing straight up and going straight back, and Phillips made him pay there, Bob. With all that said, Uma had a very good round number five. After a shaky round four, the fourth round was a good round for Phillips. Take a look at the numbers in round five. Phillips had the edge, 27-21, and power connects. See a little adjustment once again from the young Uma. Starting the round, stepping back a little bit, trying to take what's being given to him by the oncoming Phillips. Cat Phillips coming in. Well, he's taking some leather from Phillips. He's starting to measure Phillips a little bit in spots with that left hand. Luminati, big time power guy. Has the nine knockouts in the 14 pro bouts, but his last knockout, May of last year. Phillips affected Uma there. Yep. Caught Uma standing straight up in front again. Stepped in at the right time. Take a look at Teddy Atlas's scorecard through five rounds 49 47. For Uma, I have it 49 46, but it's a close 49 46. And he, of course, had his obligatory even round. The late part of this fight will tell how Phillips, the older Phillips, Phillips has been around for 13 years and eight months, how he is able to hold up.
Phillips got caught with a short right hand from Uma. Both guys have taken some big shots here in the sixth round. This is a good fight here, Bob. Everything you want. There's skill. There's heart. There's give and take. There was one problem. As I said, offensively is real good. Doesn't waste much. Always in good position. Sometimes he'll pose after he punches. That's where Phillips, right there, has been coming on. They just trade. What a round six. Uma and Berto Phillips. Phillips in the black trunks. 31 years of age. Kasim Uma, the 22-year-old. 12-1-1, nine knockouts. Uma has been much busier as far as punches thrown. But Phillips has had his moments landing big shots. Take a look at the punches landed round by round according to CompuBox. Huge edge for Uma. But if you look at some of the effective punches being landed, even though Uma has the edge in every round with punches landed and punches thrown, there are rounds in here that definitely go Phillips' way. Again, what might tell a toll? As we come down the stretch, this tremendous fight is two things. One, the age of Phillips, the 13-year, eight-month career, what's on his old domino, and also how much harder he has to work to get somewhere compared to the younger Uma. Okay, we go to the corner of Verno Phillips and Trevor Whitman joins us. Trevor, Bob Papa, Teddy Atlas. How are you doing? How are you? Verno doing great. seems to be very good at timing that right hand over the top. Very good with it, but he's got to stop backing up. We need to go forward with him. Go forward with combinations. He's got to stop backing up with this guy, get his hands up while he's moving his head. I think we're going to get him in the later rounds. He's been working the body very well. Combinations, B. Still there? Yes, we are. Okay. Do you want your man to step around Uma? A yes, bit? I, I would love for him to use angles. Because Uma, Uma's a guy that needs to be set to punch. Perfect, perfect. Yes, he just does need to use, start using angles. Uh, uh, he needs to step on a foot, keep the guy from uh, pushing him backwards, keep his weight on his front leg. I think we're winning the inside game, definitely. Uh, uh, if he's working straight punches, definitely. He, uh, uh, if he works straight punches, then hooks. We're looking for hooks every time. It's keeping him off balance when uh, Kasim Uma steps back. So if we stick on the inside, I think we're going to have this fight. It's going to the later rounds, and I think we're hurting him. So, Trevor, in the corner, we can expect to tell you, to hear you telling Phillips to move around, walk around. Perfect. Yes, you can hear me that, say that. All right, Trevor, best of luck. Right. Appreciate it. Thanks, right. guys. Trevor Whitman doing a very good job with Verno Phillips. Good young trainer. Has done a good job here. And these two fighters have done a tremendous job. I think that might hurt Phillips a little bit. He's throwing these big punches, and he's putting himself off balance. You see Uma just shoot a little left hand to the body. I think Uma may be able to really just completely capture this fight if he would concentrate on the body now. Phillips is 31. He's had a couple of long layoffs. He said to stretch with tell, but Phillips is dead game. What a chin by Uma. He's taking some bombs. What a fight. Oh, baby. Well, we might be in North Dakota, but this is as big time as it gets. Let's listen in to Johnny Bunker. Breathe in. There, the first two go in. Well, the third one will for Phillips. That is the benefit of combination punching. The two right there. Deep breath. Deep breath now. Deep breath. Deep breath. Another round like that. We got three more. Okay. Three more. And what a performance by Bruno Phillips and Kasim Uma.
We start round number eight. Any, for you people out there that are enjoying this great fight, pull your friends up. There's three rounds left. Come to tune in if they're not. This is a good one. Uma has the huge edge in punches thrown and punches landed. But Phillips has had a lot of effective punches landed. See the numbers through seven. I'm taking my hat off to Phillips. He came here prepared. 31 years old or not. Hasn't fought in 14 months. And before that, he had a two-and-a-half-year layoff. But I shouldn't be too surprised. There's a man who has fought four former world champions. Good test for the young, very promising Uma. Now Phillips turned pro when Uma was nine. The only mistakes Uma makes, I said it from the beginning, Bob, they stand a little straight up take a picture once in a while after he punches and sometimes step straight back but he doesn't waste much take a look at teddy's scorecard through seven 69 66 out of 68 65 for uma hey it seemed to me that if uma you made the point in the last round if uma would throw body shots might be able to slow down the older phillips Yeah, I think he may be, although he's doing some good work here, he must not stay in the middle too long because that's where Phillips has his moment. He'll come right back. And when Uma gets greedy, Bob, and stays there for five punches instead of four, he gets nailed. But as we started to say, as you just mentioned, I think that Uma's missing the boat a little bit by not going to that body more. Pushing Phillips downhill a little bit because Phillips looked warm that last round. And he's been revived a little bit this round. The woman was concentrating on that body a little bit more. The ability of Phillips to revive himself might not be there. Left to the chin by Phillips. Uma answers back. Phillips round number nine underway scheduled for ten these are junior middleweights no knockdown so far in the fight but these guys have thrown a bevy of bombs through eight rounds the corner of Phillips said forget about going to the body now go after Uma's head a little slip there see the numbers in round eight Uma has had the edge in every round punches thrown punches landed but Phillips has had some rounds where he was very effective with the punches he landed. And that may, what you just said, make for some interesting scoring. Maybe even some controversial scoring. Low blow there, second of goal by Phillips. That's the second time he's been warned. The referee, Ed Obergon, said that's the second one. That's the second one. Fights past eight rounds. You see Phillips has had many more. Uma had a 10-rounder in his last fight. Teddy, something you mentioned. If Uma does not win this fight, he is going to regret the fact that he did not concentrate on Phillips' body a little bit more. Yes, he will. And I think he should be concentrating on it right now. Because when he does miss, he only misses because Phillips is doing what any man would do when he's under attack, when he's under siege. He's moving his head. If Uma would go to the body, nothing would miss. The Uma. body does not move. Uma scoring. Phillips trying to time that right hand. He missed with it. Got tagged. More off balance than anything else. And all right here is Uma's picking his spots real nice. Again, does not raise much. Gets 
puts himself into good position. And right now he's taking care of defenses well as well as offense. Big ninth round for 22-year-old Kasim Uma. And Phillips resting on the ropes. Looks like a body shot affected him. That's what we called for, body shots. Looks like it was right in the middle, right in the solar plex area. It's a very close fight. That's a knockdown right there. Plus, Uma is winning this round. So I don't think, uh, yeah, look at Phillips. He's really trying to protect his body, Teddy. Yes, he is. Uma should concentrate on that body. He concentrates on that body. He probably gets Phillips out of there. There's the effect of that body shot. It doesn't have to be hard. All it has to do is be clean. And that was a clean left hand around the loop area. Cleaning up some ice in the corner of Uma. Verno Phillips coming off a 14-month layoff. Done a fantastic job. Uma getting that left glove retaped. Key moment, though, in round number nine. Uma finally concentrated on the body attack. And Phillips went down. A knockdown was scored, plus Uma controlled the round. 10-8 for Uma, big in the scoring. I said I like this Uma. I like both these guys, no doubt about it. But the skills, the ability, the youth of Uma. But you got to love his attitude. He's got a real fighter's attitude. And he's in there with a guy with a real fighter's attitude. Well, if Uma wins this fight, he continues on his track. And Verno Phillips has put himself back in some paydays, win, lose, or draw at this point. Yes, he has. That's a good point there, Bob. Because he definitely has some fight left in him. His phone will ring. Now Phillips goes southpaw. I think right now Uma should be doing two things, nothing else. Get in close, go to that body, and throw uppercuts. No other punches should exist in the arsenal right now to the end for Uma. The body shots, we already know why. The body shot the round before that effect of that punch. Everybody saw that on Phillips. Also the uppercut. Phillips is leaning forward on the inside now. Almost looks like Phillips is keeping his hands lower to protect against the body shot. And you're right, he is. Look at him, very patient. The only deviation from what I said that I thought he should do, what I suggested is maybe Uma could fake something to the body, take advantage of what you just mentioned, Phillips dropping his hands, and then go up top. Catch Phillips with his hands down. That's how you set up an explosive fight ending punch. That's how Tommy Hearns did it with the great Roberto Duran. Take the left to the body, right hand to the head. And Phillips is, is trying to sucker Uma in so he could maybe jump time a big shot. Well, the spots that are there for that, and Phillips knows where those spots are. It's while Uma's punching. Sometimes Uma, as we said from the beginning, will stay there a little too long. But right now, the youth, the strength of Uma has taken control. The body and uppercuts again. It's there. Just look. Watch Phillips on the inside, how he leans forward. Folks, if you just tuned in, this has been going on for 10 rounds. Phillips trying to hold on there. Bernal just about out of gas at this point. Plenty of hard Phillips to show. Look at that hard. Oh, boy. And Uma's staying right in there with him. What a fight. <laughs> Berno Phillips and Kasim Uma in a 10-round slugfest. Phillips thinks he's a winner. So does Uma. We'll get the show. is presented by Miller High Life. And in part by Western Union Money Transfer, the fastest way to send money worldwide. And by Sports Center. Which Sports Center do you watch? The sites of Hankinson, North Dakota. But 
No bull. This was some fight between Kasim Uma and Verno Phillips. Uma averaged 131 punches thrown per round. He landed 310 of 848. He dropped Phillips in the critical round nine with a body shot. Phillips 190 of 759. Teddy Atlas's scorecard reads as follows. 98, 93 for Uma. I had it 97, 92 for Uma. Now for the judges' scorecards, our ring announcer, Jeff Connor. Round of applause for these gladiators. What a fight. What a night. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Ballard scores at 96-93. Judge Walski, 97-93. Judge Cunningham, 95-94. For the winner out of the red corner, Kasim the Dream. He doesn't even look tired, Teddy. He's a tremendous physical specimen, and mentally, he has the attitude you want in a fighter. Hey, after all, after what's happened in his life, what could be tough? Defected from Uganda after being abducted into the army at the age of seven, his nickname is The Dream. Defecting to the U.S. in 1998, and he is truly living an American dream. He is now 13-1-1. One one, an impressive win against Werner Phillips, who should get more paydays after his performance as well. Well, tonight's card being promoted by Sugar Ray Leonard and Sugar Ray Leonard Productions. And, of course, coming up on the 20-year anniversary of one of the great bouts, a classic, Leonard and Hearns. And yesterday, Sugar Ray Leonard sat down and talked about that epic.